Madam Secretary, there's still one more vote on, and we won't tell you what we're doing with that vote, but uh, we're basically ignoring it. And uh, But uh, we thought we'd get started so we, you could finish sooner, and uh, uh, it's now my time to recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. Sherman. I have a, a lot of questions for the record, and oh, then a, a Four or five minutes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, for the record, uh, for last uh, for the fiscal year currently in progress, the administration requested 35 million for Armenia. Uh, the Congress provided 58 million. Now, your current budget request not only is less than your what we provided for this year, 58. It's less than what you requested last year. You're down to 24, and we see an increase in the uh, funds for Ab Azerbaijan, and this seems to add injury on top of the insult where we were asked not to take up the Armenia Genocide Resolution. One would have thought that, uh, given that Congress acquiesced on that, that there would be more in this budget for Armenia. The uh, uh, second thing is the, uh, picks up on Mr. Manzullo's question and the DT, DDTC. Uh, what we have is $122 billion of U.S. exports all of which have to funnel through 44 licensing officers. In order to get this program on target, it's going to take another $5 million. Um, if we fail to get it on target, you're going to see the offshoring of arms production. And that's not only bad for jobs, it builds up the capacity of arms manufacturing outside the United States and uh, undermines the whole goal of DDTC, which isn't just to make sure our arms don't get in the wrong hands, but to make sure that bad people don't get the capacity to do bad things. Uh, a year ago, you committed to uh, coming up with a solution. A year went by, then the president uh, said, well, you've got 90 days to come up with a plan. And now, uh, in response to Mr. Manzullo, you're proposing additional fees. Uh, in this town, I can't imagine that you're going to get additional fees adopted uh, by the end of this administration. And here we are, for one of $5 million, not having fast uh, a, a review of some $122 billion uh, of exports. So I would hope that you would uh, supplement your request and ask for the $5 million. Uh, I assure you that uh, the increased income taxes by the companies involved will more than pay for it. Um, uh, we had a uh, public law passed uh, requiring that the State Department process uh, uh, fiancé and immediate relative visas that they ought to be processed within 30 days um, and uh, non-immediate relatives within 60 days. Thus, once a person is eligible for an interview, all the documents uh, have been received by DT, uh, DHS and the, uh, uh, that that should go through uh, within, I believe, 30 days. I hope you'd respond for the record as to whether the uh, administration is achieving the objectives set forth in Public Law 107-228. Um, building on uh, the... Uh, a discussion on Ar Iran, um, I'd like to put into the record the reports of both uh, CRS and the GAO, uh, which outline so many uh, investments, over $20 billion uh, of investments uh, in the Iran oil s uh, sector. Now, uh, the without uh, objection, uh, those reports will be included in the record. Now, uh, it appears that there is just one person in the Economics Bureau who is responsible for reviewing uh, the Iran investments in the Iran uh, oil sector. And this may be one person too many because it seems as if the administration is well aware of investments and has taken the view that at least this particular act of Congress is not a statute, it's just advice. Uh, I've heard uh, many uh, uh, high officials of the State Department say that the Iran Sanctions Act is a wonderful act, but that really you're not going to comply with the letter of the statute, just you like the, the kind of overall spirit. And I wonder if you could, uh, and maybe you could answer this uh, here, commit to having the Economics Bureau 
uh, review each of the transactions identified uh, by the uh, GAO report or the, uh, the CRS report and determine whether or why uh, they believe this triggers uh, the next step in the Iran Sanctions Act process, which is for the administration to determine whether to waive sanctions or whether to go through the process of, whether, or whether to impose sanctions or whether to go through the process of waiving them. Uh, can you commit to at least reviewing what CRS and GAO have produced? Uh, <clears throat> well, thank you. I've not actually seen what CRS and GAO have produced, and I, um, I'm just concerned, Congressman, to, to take on an obligation. I don't know what the numbers are. I don't know how many cases we'd be committing to. I will assure you that we are very cognizant and very concerned about oil investments uh, in Iran, and we, I personally spend a lot of time trying to convince people not to do them. Um, I also think that we are in a complex situation here where we're trying to get voluntary compliance from a number of countries and a number of companies with the kinds of financial sanctions that we think actually are having a real impact, not just on the economy as a whole, but on the oil sector as well. So um, I beg your forbearance, but I certainly will take a look at the request well, and, and see if we can, uh, can uh, fulfill it. I think you're an eloquent advocate for the idea that the Iran Sanctions Act is a bad idea in that it involves imposing sanctions on basically companies in friendly countries. Um, it just chagrins me to think that uh, it, you just, when you see a statute that requires one course of action and you advocate a different course of action, voluntary negotiations as opposed to a name and shame and perhaps sanctions process, that uh, the statute really is, is, is just advice. I no, I don't want to be misunderstood, Congressman. I, be I believe we have, we should uh, use the act. I've told you, I think it's a very, it's very useful. My only point is that we're in a complex set of uh, arrangements here because we are trying to get voluntary sanctions as well. That was the only point. I, 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 I would hope that, I mean, you Time can't possibly apply the act if you don't review the individual Thank transactions. You. We'll provide a copy in the record. Thank All you right. very much. Time of the gentleman has expired. Uh, if you'll bear with us just a, a few minutes. I might gratuitously add on the point for my colleague, Mr. Sherman, that um, the way the law is structured, there's waiver authority. Oh, I understand that. It's getting people to make the finding uh, that we haven't been able to do. And I believe just the existence of that statute has deterred some investment. My guess is a couple of sanctions would have a, a ripple negative. I understand the complications that may cause you in, in, in promoting the multilateral uh, sanctions agenda, but look at what some of the unilateral actions on banking have done. Uh, I, I agree, Congressman. I don't think we're in disagreement here. I'm not hesitant to do it. Um, I just didn't want to take on review. I don't know how oh, many no, cases no. and whether or not they would meet our, our tests, but I'm, I'm not hesitant to, uh, to sanction and or waive if, if it makes sense to waive, or to let a sanction stand if it, if it doesn't make sense to waive. Well, let's, we'll just be in recess here rather than um, let's keep thinking of questions to ask you while we wait <laughs> for the, the last vote is now posted. Well, perhaps so I, I could say a word about the Armenia question that, oh, sure. uh, that well, the Congressman asked, which uh, I, um, I believe we, be we think we've met the development um, needs as we see them, but I just would remind in terms of um, our support for Armenia, Armenia is of course also a recipient of an MCC, uh, which is a very strong statement of um, our support for, for, for Armenia. Uh, even with the, the Chairman's indulgence, I'll point out that even then it's far below, uh, you, even if you added 10 million from that fund, you'd be far below what we provided last year. We're just sort of talking while the neck came. Thank you. No problem whatsoever. I'm ready to talk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Secretary Rice, on a, a topic that uh, had not been uh, brought up, but that Congresswoman Tammy Baldwin and, and so many others have been involved with, and that's uh, concerning the, uh, uh, the, the workplace inequities that are facing uh, gays and lesbians in the U.S. Uh, Department of State. I'm sure that you've heard a lot about the former ambassador to Romania, Michael Guest, who brought out a lot of the uh, unfair treatment that are uh, based, that are 
faced by uh, gay and lesbian porn service officers uh, and, uh, and their partners. And although it is true that there's um, some of those inequities could be dealt by uh, legislation, um, uh, we believe that you do have uh, legal authority to address a range of, of basic concerns through uh, internal regulatory uh, changes, and that is uh, access to training, including language and security classes for same-sex domestic partners, et cetera. And we will be sending you uh, a letter soon um, uh, detailing some of these changes that are within your uh, purview to make without needing legislative authority, and we hope that uh, you will consider uh, the uh, inequities that are that are facing many of these uh, wonderful men and women who are in, in sometimes in very tough assignments and uh, do need that uh, workplace protection. Well, I appreciate that, and I look forward to receiving your letter. I think we have uh, we have tried to be a department that is uh, sensitive to the need of uh, domestic partners and. Uh, and uh, we've tried to do that overseas as well as uh, in the department. I pride myself on uh, trying to run a department where everybody is welcome and where uh, we don't have any tests of, uh, certainly of uh, issues like uh, sexual orientation. Um, this is something that I consider very important. Um, I have begun to look at some of these issues on my own, particularly uh, the issue of security training, which um, yes. I think may, that is something perhaps that we really ought to be looking uh, at uh, aggressively and urgently. So I look forward to getting your letter and responding. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for your openness in that. And if I may ask uh, an additional question, Mr. Chairman. Um, in my uh, introductory uh, statement, I had alluded to a letter that I had uh, sent to you last week regarding the, uh, the partnerships that uh, Iran and Venezuela have entered into. And of course, uh, being two sovereign nations, uh, they can do as they wish. Uh, my concern has been whether uh, there are any uh, subsidiaries, any U.S. Uh, uh, business interests related into uh, some of these energy and uh, petrochemical uh, deals that are uh, operating uh, in order to uh, do the end run about around the uh, Iran Sanctions Act or any other uh, sanctions policy that uh, that they might that we might have, and that have become law. And it's uh, noted with interest that uh, in uh, for some of these deals, their um, their bank accounts are actually uh, housed in uh, the uh, the uh, British uh, Virgin Islands, which makes one uh, think that perhaps it's done in a way specifically to do an end run about around our sanctions. And if you could comment about these uh, energy deals and any subsidiaries uh, that have U.S. involvement in them. Well, we would be, of course, very, uh, look very much uh, uh, with disfavor on uh, anything that tried to get around the, the sanctions, particularly the, the, the 311 sanctions that have been imposed. We're aware uh, that uh, these uh, governments are always trying to find other ways to, you know, if we go after the central uh, funding, uh, the, the more um, reputable international financial institutions that they'll look for other ways. Uh, it's a combination of intelligence and treasury tracking to try to make sure that that's not happening. Um, and I'm aware of the, the your, and, and I want to thank you for raising the question. Of course, we're looking into it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. The Secretary must leave in about eight minutes. Um, and uh, particularly because, well, never mind. Sorry. <laughs> At least people on our side of the aisle would be sensitive to it. Um, so I'm going to recognize, I'd like to, for the people who haven't asked questions, love to get them a few questions in, but I ask uh, the members who are going to ask those questions to uh, try to be restrained in terms of comments and so we can get all, I guess we have four people here and we have eight minutes. Gentlelady from Texas, Sheila Jackson Lee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let me, um, in this room, offer my expressions of sympathy to the loss of our a very outstanding international humanitarian, Tom Lantos. And uh, I think we can clearly say, Madam Secretary, that his spirit uh, will live on uh, in American foreign policy. Let me thank you as well for your service. And uh, to our disappointment, uh, we may not see you in this capacity. And, discussing budgets, uh, and we thank you for your presence and your service as well. 
Very quickly, why don't I go to the budget and express my disappointment on several issues, and um, if you could comment on them, and then I'll uh, just yield. The issues dealing with child survival and health programs, we noticed that the budget going forward cuts those dollars, and I think we can clearly say that there is a continued need in terms of the work we do as it relates to children internationally. We know that the refugee problem continues. Um, uh, those numbers are there. I don't want to cite the numbers. It'll take up my time. The refugee problem continues, and particularly the refugees in Iraq. Um, and I'd like to know why we have a cut in refugee assistance, since I think the numbers in Iraq are growing, and what are we doing with them? Peacekeeping operations, particularly as relates to Africa and uh, the Sudan, and our work with the UN, monies are being cut in peacekeeping operations, uh, and I think that is something that it does a disservice to our foreign policy. Lastly, as you know, that I'm looking to go to Pakistan, and I want to know what kind of cooperative efforts are we engaged in to ensure impartial, safe elections on this coming Monday. Are we working with the UN? Are we supporting monitors uh, to help this? And thank you. Thank you. And first of all, thank you for going to Pakistan. I think it's very important. Uh, we think this election needs to be credible in the eyes of the Pakistani people. We've made that point. Uh, the EU will have a huge monitoring uh, operation there. We will obviously depend in part on them, on other NGOs. We have our own people in our consulates throughout the area, and we will have them fanned out. Uh, but um, I think the work that you'll be doing is uh, going to be important to the effort. So I look forward to talking with you before you go and, uh, and after. Uh, in terms of uh, child survival health and health, um, we have asked for what we uh, – the President's request has actually not changed from the appropriated, yes, uh, it's come down, but we think that this is uh, important to support the President's malaria initiative, uh, the uh, support to HIV and AIDS, uh, it's something uh, – maternal health, these are things that we take uh, very seriously. And uh, finally, on refugees, um, we've, we've – And peacekeeping. On Refugees, I'm sorry? And peacekeeping. Oh, and peacekeeping. Um, I was explaining earlier that um, there's a kind of cash flow approach, really, to to peacekeeping. We think we can meet our obligations if this is fully funded. Sometimes we've gone to supplementals for specific peacekeeping operations like Darfur. Uh, if we can just make sure that we're fully funded, we think we'll be able to meet our obligations. Um, and finally, as to refugees, um, we will be asking for more uh, in the supplemental on uh, refugees. Um, we believe that the numbers we've given you will fund uh, the operations as we know them. And as to Iraq, uh, there are quite a few people now returning, and one of the things that we're trying to do with the UN and with the Iraqi government is to have a more systematic way to accommodate those people who are trying to return, including the rebuilding of housing in places like Ramadi. Thank you. Uh, uh, again, the Secretary has about five minutes, and the gentleman from Colorado, I think, is the next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Madam Secretary, let me tell you, first of all, I am uh, one who believes entirely in, um, in your integrity and I think you have done a, a, an enormously important job for this country and admire and respect your efforts. Um, it is therefore with some uh, degree of consternation that I have to bring up again an issue that puts in jeopardy not your integrity, or I mean not jeopardy, but a question, but certainly that of the department when we have a situation where there is a law that's been passed by Congress. It's very specific. Um, USC 1253 reads, upon being notified by the Attorney General that the government of a foreign country denies or unreasonably delays accepting an alien who is a citizen of that country after the Attorney General asks whether the government will accept the alien, the Secretary of State shall doesn't say may, doesn't say there's any kind of decision-making process that goes on as to whether or not you want to do this. The Secretary of State shall order counselor officers in that foreign country to discontinue granting immigrant visas or non-immigrant visas or both to citizens of that country until the Attorney General notifies the Secretary that the country, oh, that the country has accepted the alien. Now there's a long list of countries that are presently not accepting their aliens back, including of course China and Iraq. We are now starting to resettle Iraqi refugees in the United States. All of that seems to me to be 
flying, not the resettlement, but certainly the fact that we have not fulfilled the responsibility, that the department hasn't re fulfilled the responsibility under the law, uh, it begs the question, why not? And, and will he, do you plan on on doing it, I know the president. When I think it was in the State of the Union message, if I'm not mistaken, there was a perhaps a, a sentence uh, that he where he said something about the fact that we intend to work with Congress on this issue. And I don't know what that means, and, and would really be interested to know until you until we get a change in the law, which is as I assume what you're hoping for. Will you obey the law that has been passed? Well, Congressman, we are always uh, obligated and take seriously obeying the law. Uh, we have tried to work with governments to uh, get people returned when these uh, issues come. And uh, I would just ask you to look at the efforts that we've made with China and with others uh, on these issues. Sometimes um, there are questions about whether people can be returned um, and uh, on, on human rights grounds there are questions. Yeah. So I just, I think it's not quite so... Uh, cut and dry, but I want to assure you that we, we want to um, obey the laws. The President said we'll work with you, but these are, are cases that we take very seriously. We work very hard with these governments to have people return. There are presently 40,000. The time of the gentleman has expired. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I mean, we did not see that. Um, you have time for. But um, perhaps I can take. I, I've got it. Right. I have about two minutes. Can we take one more question? And, and uh, I apologize for having to leave. Ms. Wolsey is next. And, and I will take any questions that people have uh, for the record, and I Great. will respond. Uh, You've been very generous with your time. Urgently. It's not your fault. We had a 45 minute break. Uh, it ends right with me, so I will be very quick. Uh, Madam Secretary, one of uh, the leading Republican candidates for president has been quoted over and over about saying that uh, we'll be in Iraq for 50 to 100 years. So my question to you is, what is your response to that? Uh, second, what is the administration bringing, doing to bring the, the occupation in Iraq to an end? And three, uh, what does the declaration of principles that the administration is trying to reach with Iraq have to do with bringing our troops home? Well, um, on the, the final point, um, uh, Congresswoman, um, I think you, there was an op-ed that Secretary Gates and I did this morning about the agreement that we're seeking with the Iraqis. It's principally so that our forces have a legal basis uh, to continue to operate there. Whatever uh, the next administration may choose to think that that operation needs to be, whether it's training or whatever, we need to have a legal basis for our forces. And that legal basis will expire with the UN Security Council resolution at the end of the year. And uh, it's a SOFA-like agreement, and that's the principle here. I, I don't want to comment on any one specific comment about about Iraq except to say that I think we all understand that um, America's role in the Middle East and America's role in, the Iraq, in Iraq are interlinked. Um, we expect to continue to have a relationship with Iraq, political, economic, the training of their security forces and the like. And um, I don't know how long that relationship will go on, but if it's a democratic Iraq that is contributing to stability in the Middle East, I hope that it will be a relationship that lasts. Well, do you uh, think that you uh, would uh, bring we, that to the Congress? Uh, we have done many, many SOFAs. They, they don't re have never required congressional authorization. I think if you read what we're trying to do, it's simply to give our forces a legal basis to stay and do the things that the our president and the next president may want. But if I could just close, uh, uh, Congresswoman, I really hope we'll stop this language of occupation. I've been out there with our forces, as I'm sure you know. You support them. I know you do. Uh, they are uh, men and women who are sacrificing every day, paying the ultimate measure. They're trying to help uh, decent and innocent Iraqis build a decent uh, society. They're fighting al-Qaeda. They're fighting special forces, uh, special squads, death squads that go after innocent Iraqis. They don't think of themselves as occupiers. The Iraqis don't think of them as occupiers, since I sure don't. And so that's language I hope we will abandon. Thank you very much. Time of the gentility has expired. Madam Secretary, thank you very much. To my colleagues that I didn't get to, I, I apologize. And, uh, I, I do want to be clear. I'll take any questions for the record, gladly. We will, if we get some, we'll send them on. Thank you. Thank you.